All right, so 2022 spoiler alert is directed by Michael Showalter, who some of you might know for directing The Big Sick, as well as last year's The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Wasn't a huge fan of Eyes of Tammy Faye, I gotta be honest. And The Big Sick is a movie I have not seen, but have heard nothing but good things about. Uh, the screenplay here is by David Marshall Grant and Dan Savage. David Marshall Grant actually plays the character of Tony in this film. And it is based on the book, spoiler alert, The Hero Dies by Michael Osiello, who Jim Parsons plays in this film alongside Ben Aldridge as Kit Cohen. And immediately I'm going to bring up the movie Bros that came out a few months ago or so. Um, just from the trailers alone, people are probably going to compare this movie to that one and be like, oh, it's basically just Bros too. Um, that's your first mistake is thinking that this is like basically just Bros. It's really not. It has a very different story. It has a very relatable and personal story. And it's it's a very hard to watch kind of story too. If you haven't watched the trailer or if you just like started watching the trailer and you thought you knew what kind of movie this was, it's a movie about cancer. Um, the, the character of Ben Aldridge, uh, not the character of Ben Aldridge, but Ben Aldridge as Kit Cohen, his character gets cancer in the film. It's not something that's like immediate in the film, but it's it's something that you kind of know is coming throughout the movie because from the, the very beginning they address okay, this guy has cancer, now let's go back and see what their life was like before this. And uh, it's just about Michael and Kit meeting each other and, you know, kind of seeing 13 years of their life before this this horrible thing happens to them. And um, it, for anybody who has lost somebody to cancer, who, for anybody who's known somebody who's had to battle cancer, you know how terrible of a thing... Not only it is to go through for the person who has it, but for the people around them as well. Personally, I've lost quite a few people to cancer in my family. And um, it, it never gets easier. And this film, I think, portrays that that process perfectly. I was a kid at the time when a lot of this was going on. I didn't see a lot of what was going on. But I, I in, in the back of my mind, I kind of knew what was happening. And, um, you know, I, I knew that people were in pain and suffering and just trying so hard to fight it. And um, I don't know, you just kind of see that process throughout this movie with not only Jim Parsons' character, but, you know, Sally Field's character who plays Marilyn, the the mother to Kit, and then Bill Irwin as Bob who plays the father to Kit. Um, you see just how it is for, for all three of them, you know, Jim Parsons' character, Sally Field's character, Bill Irwin's character. You see how they're all kind of dealing with it separately while together at the same time and you just see how difficult of a process it is to watch somebody you love just start to wither away essentially and um i i won't lie to you this is one of the hardest movies i've watched this year i'm getting emotional right now um yeah i mean it's not an easy movie to watch for me at all um you know i've seen other movies that have to deal with people dying of cancer like fault in our stars and shit like that that shit makes me cry of course um but something about the way they're doing it in here just feels a lot more real and a lot more personal whereas opposed to something like that i mean you kind of know like yes it's happening to somebody somewhere but fault in our stars it's at the end of the day it's a fictional book um but here like you know what's happening in this movie actually happened to somebody and and you know that you know uh, when it comes to movies based on books you don't know how much of everything is true how much is false but here it feels just so organic it feels so natural that you have to imagine that there's little to nothing that they left out or added um it just feels like it's this complete story about these two people and it doesn't feel like they left out any of the difficult parts it, they didn't leave like it's not just a snapshot of like their best moments in their life because it's really not in fact i'd say you see more of them kind of broken than not um you know even before the whole cancer element comes into their life they're already kind of on the rocks with their relationship and still are, in, are already having issues um and almost like the cancer is almost what brought them back together in a kind of messed up way but um yeah, I'm talking about all the emotional elements to this movie, and I'm talking about how it's nothing compared to, to bro, or not nothing compared, you know what I mean? It's n nothing like bros, because bros, I think at times relied a little too heavily on the fact that it was a rom-com about a gay couple, um, and some of the comedy was a little bit too crude, a little bit too much, um, and that's just kind of how it is with uh, 
and I'm Billy Eichner. That's kind of just how it is with some of his comedy sometimes, and I'm fine with that. Um, and then I forget who, uh, Judd Apatow, I believe he wasn't like one of the writers or directors on that, but he was a producer and you could feel a lot of Judd Apatow's humor in there, which is humor I typically enjoy. I like a lot of Judd Apatow's movies, but in that one, it, it just felt as opposed to this, at least, and it's hard, you really shouldn't compare these two movies. Like that's kind of the point I'm trying to make now is because they're two very, even though they have similar aspects to them. They're two wildly different movies about wildly different things. Yes, it might be about, you know, uh, a gay couple, but at the end of the day, it's dealing with a lot heavier topics than than bros. So you shouldn't really compare it in that aspect. But if you were trying to compare it, I would say that this movie just does a lot better in terms of actually feeling like a real story and not just feeling like things happening at times, um, which is kind of how I felt with bros. It's just like, oh, you have this whole LGBTQ, uh, yeah, LGBTQ plus museum thing in that movie, and I'm just like, yeah, that's fun and all, I guess, but, like, who gives a shit? I don't give a shit. Um, I don't know. That movie, like, I, I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong. I had fun with that movie. Is it going to be one of my favorites of the year? No. Is it going to be one of my least favorites of the year? Absolutely not. Um, but when it comes to movies trying to kind of do a similar thing, which is tell a rom-com story involving a gay couple, this one does so much better in my opinion is it the movie i would watch over bros i don't necessarily know because with bros it's a lot easier of a watch than this one um but this is the better movie i would say of the two and uh, uh martin martin thomas from from double toasted he was saying something about this movie is the movie that you know bros promised us it would be and even then i'm just like not necessarily i mean i get what you're saying it's it, it's a rom-com that doesn't like it doesn't like pat itself on the back too much because it has a gay couple in it like you know that's kind of how bros is it's like oh my gosh we're the first you know real big budget rom-com involving a gay couple look at us we're fantastic look at us we're running through the street where you know we got the flag flying through the wind and all that shit like that's great but you still forgot to make like a really good story and it's just bros is just one of those typical stories where i feel like if you took out the the gay couple element of it it'd just be another generic rom-com and and this like i would almost even say it's not re even really a rom-com because there are elements of comedy in this movie but it's sprinkled throughout where it's comic relief in parts where you really need it and you know anytime they use comedy in this movie it's used at the right time it's used at the appropriate time it's used when you need a laugh the most and um i don't know there's just a lot of things that they do right with this movie i have very few complaints i have one small complaint that even by the end of the movie like gets kind of shifted into something where i'm like oh no i like how that all came together you know there's a whole sitcom aspect in this movie um which you might be a little confused excuse me a little confused by on the surface but that's basically how um, how Michael, Jim Parsons' character, thinks about his childhood is in the sense that his childhood was like a sitcom. And that's something I didn't really care for too much throughout the film. But by the end of the film, they did something with it that I, I thought was really unique and and brought even more emotion to it than I was expecting. And I was already expecting to have a lot of emotions. But not even going to lie to you, I was bawling my eyes out in the theater. I'm glad there were only two other people there watching it with me um hopefully people go check this movie out but i have a feeling with all the other movies out right now it's probably going to get pushed under the rug and we'll probably get more attention when it uh pops up on a streaming service and whatnot but uh yeah let me see if i have any other notes here i know i feel like most of the time i've just been talking about bros but i, I feel like so many people are gonna just try to compare this movie to that even without watching it just even watching like 30 seconds of the trailer, they think they know exactly what kind of movie this is. And I won't lie, the trailer makes it look sappy. It makes it look kind of, I don't know, it, does, it, makes, it doesn't make it look as good as it actually is. But when you break it down, like it's a really relatable story. There's something in this movie that anybody can relate to. Like there's got to at least be one thing in this movie that somebody can relate to out there, whether it be like the cancer aspect, whether it be, you know, you being gay, being in the closet, whatever. Whatever it might be, there's a lot of things in this movie that people can relate to on a human level. And, you know, again, a movie like Bros, yeah, sure, there's things people can relate to, especially gay people. But 
this this feels like the movie that's more for everybody instead of for one kind of group of people you know I guess that's kind of how I feel at the end of the day but yeah um they definitely got all the hard stuff right um the like difficult to watch stuff um they they made it difficult to watch but they they made it impactful and they made it so like you didn't want to look away because you wanted to see you wanted to get like every moment of it you could it's almost like you knew that character who had cancer in the movie. It's almost like you knew them, at least for me personally, like somebody who's had to deal with, you know, losing people to cancer in the past. It, it puts you in the shoes. It makes you feel like you're losing them. So like as hard as it is to, to be in those moments where they're in so much pain and they look like skeletons and they, they don't look like themselves, you know, as much as you want to look away, you still care about them. So you don't want to because you want to be there for them, and, um, yeah, this movie just hit me on a lot of emotional elements, and, um, yeah, I think it definitely did its job right, so, yeah, um, I, everybody did a great job in the movie, I think everybody was, did a really good job acting, um, Jim Parsons was great in this movie, I saw some complaints that he looked a little too old for the part, uh, I only listened to, like, one review, and they were, like, yeah, just, like, seeing him in the, like, earlier parts of the movie where he's supposed to be younger, it looks like this, like, 40-year-old guy in a club. I'm like, yeah, kind of, but at the same time, like, I don't know, he's Jim Parsons. That's just kind of what he looks like sometimes, okay? Don't don't judge Jim Parsons. I like him. Uh, but, yeah, for the most part, great movie. Is it one of the best movies I've seen all year? Not necessarily, but I do think it'll at least get an honorable mention when it comes to my top 10 favorites of, of 2022 list. Uh, but yeah, have you seen 2022 Spoiler Alert? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Are you in the middle? Love to know. Comment down below. And have you not seen it yet? Are you planning on watching it in the theater? Why or why not? Really anything you want to comment down below, just I'd love to hear from you. And I respond to pretty much every comment. Uh, but yeah, in terms of the ranking this movie, uh, new kind of ranking system here for movies. We got the, uh, the premium ticket worth the price of admission, plus maybe extra for, you know, 3D or IMAX or whatever it might be. Uh, when we have standard ticket, worth the price of admission. Discounted ticket, worth watching if it's discounted. Not great, not bad, but like, you know, not the best. And then we have free ticket. Only worth watching if it's free. Um, definitely not a great movie. But uh, I wouldn't put that in, I wouldn't put this movie in that tier at all. I would say to fairly kind of... Uh, show you guys how I feel. I think standard standard ticket would be the way to go for me. I wouldn't pay any extra to go watch this movie. Uh, will I be watching this movie again? I don't know because again, it was a really hard movie for me to watch. Uh, so typically I don't rush back to watch those types of movies, but yeah, I, I think this is worth the, uh, the price of admission. I would say it's worth watching in the theaters if you get the chance. Uh, but if you do miss out in the theaters to watch it, I wouldn't say uh, it's a super huge deal. Just look for it on a streaming service when it comes out. But yeah, there's my review for 2022 Spoiler Alert. Um, again, comment down below if you've seen it or haven't, whatever it might be. Tell me what you think or if you're going to see it. Again, all that jazz. Uh, leave a like on the video, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I will see you in the next one with another movie or TV show review. See you later.